habaneros are not common. Okay. So the habaneros are, habaneros are not seasonal. Every day. They have fruits. Every day they are there. Once you grow them, every day somebody wants them because they are not available until a lot of people i think a lot of people now have gotten the crease of habaneros people want to grow it people are growing it so until it gets to that point habaneros are not seasonal they are everyday crops so you get the same value for it throughout the year okay so let me ask this question mm. is farming habaneros or the purpose profitable of course it's extremely profitable <laughs> I like the way you put it, extremely profitable. It's very extremely profitable if you do it right. Okay, so I'm actually here with Lenny. We are here on the farm. Uh, I want to get to know you a bit. So please, can you introduce yourself to my viewers? My name is Michael Donko, Lenny. Lenny, so. Just Michael like Donko. Learning so. Learning so. Okay. But okay. It's short to be learning. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. I um, actually came here and I like how the farm is, how big it is, and what you are doing. Actually, and they feel jealous. Ah. It's even nice. Yeah. Thank you. Very nice. But can we get to know um, a little bit about you? Um, how did this whole thing start for you to say you are going to farming? Yeah. I went to Legon. Oh, okay. Okay, I, I read political science and philosophy. Ob obviously, it was just for <laughs> <laughs> it was just for reading. Stage. Okay, I was offered chemistry. I decided not to read chemistry. So, why? Why didn't you do the chemistry? Um, it was too. I didn't want to stress. Okay, but so it means you read science in school. Yeah, I read science in school. Okay, okay. So after way before school, way before finishing school, I I used to. <clears throat> follow my mom to a rice farm. A rice and farm. So I grew largely on a rice farm. Was it in Accra or no, in the water region around Pando. Pando, okay. Because okay. I went to Bishop Emma. Oh Bieko. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So I I grew up in the rice farm. My dad went worked for Ministry of Food and Agri. So I was around the TUs, the vets and all. So I got interested. Okay. But then I think the interest actually came in the rice farm. Where your mom used to take you? Where my mom used to take you. <laughs> Is that your mom used to work there or where? No, she owned her own rice farms. Okay, okay. But you know, unlike Akuse here, uh, rice farming in the Volta region is seasonal. Sure. But Akuse is all year round because it's located. Okay. But in the Volta region, it was seasonal. So when it was time for us to be in the rice farm, I was always going to be in the rice farm. <laughs> so after school, I started to grow gingers. That's after SHS or no, after the uni. uni. Okay. And I, what, what year was that? Yeah, I finished uni in 2017. 2017, okay. So while I was going to do my national service, I did my national service as a teacher. I taught government. Okay. I was doing this um, farming at the, at the side, but clearly you can't be an absentee farmer. So I had sure, I made I my to. mistakes. Okay. Learned from them. Uh, there was this time Alex was. I don't know if you know Alex the pharmacist. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know you. He was giving free seats on Twitter. I went to the officer hall and green tech. I took the free seats. But on my way home, I I started to have a business in my head with purpose. Then it started. So the seeds was it like a pepper pepper seeds that he was? Yeah, he out? gave me habaneros, the yellow ones, the laser. Okay. He gave me a um, hundred piece, one pack. Sure. Then I decided to buy more. But as every first time for my set funny things the first day I went there. Oh, oh, what was some of them? Yeah, I wanted to go for eight cases of purpose. For hey, just at the beginning. Exactly. <laughs> I ended up growing less than an acre. Okay. So, and it, the initial fab where was it? Was it also here? Was in, in the oh, no, was in the Volta region, was in the OT region actually, Lulubi. Lulubi. Okay, okay. So you picked them from here, Accra, then you took them there. Or? So I picked seeds. Now you know, like I said, every time you you grow from there is always um, you make mistakes. So I decided to nest them. I bought seed trays, I bought everything to nest, but I didn't have a nursery house or a nursery cage. So I nest them inside the room and they etiolated. <laughs> Kofi came by. I was like, Oh, why are you keeping the things inside? We have to put them outside. And I lifted them and placed them on a roofing sheet. So they the sun, some sunshine. Yeah. And they died. Oh. Because the roofing sheet was too hot for them. So. All of them with it. 
I lost like I think three thousand seeds seedlings. Wow. On my first time. Then I bought my own Nashi cage, but from then it's been it's not been all rosy, but it's been great. It's been great. And like Holland Green Tech is they are great. They always come to your farm, especially coffee. Coffee is always on your farm, like at least twice a month is there. To monitor how things yeah. are going. How is it going? They call you to ask. And they are always available. Alex, Mami, that's why um, Celestine, Charles, F- um, Prince. They are all available each time you need them. You could call them anytime, even at night. It's not okay for you to call them at night, but you call them at night and they will still give you the advice you need. Ah, so let me get to you. As a Holland Green Tech, based in Accra, right? Yes, based in Accra. But, but they have outlets in the Volta region okay. and Kumasi, I think. Sure. So the outlet in the Oti region, the, the other one, so it's manly versus the farm in the Oti The outlet region. in the Volta region is manned by Kofi. It's manned okay. 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 So Kofi was the one who was yes. paying attention more. Yeah. Okay. So how did you transition from the Volta region? here at Akusi for this farm. So initially you know that in in every business you would want to grow. Exactly. I was willing to grow. I wanted to expand. But then you know everybody has this feeling. It's a young boy, he's trying to expand. So I wanted to expand just close by my my first farm. Okay. The land was good. There was water. It was flowing. I had a pump. I had everything set up. I just I could just expand and I wouldn't need so much to expand. But the price at which they wanted to sell the piece of land to me was outrageous. I was still willing to buy. Then um a friend of mine, Augustine, is actually my cousin. But okay. we grew up as friends. So he came to the farm to see, oh, he he said he grew cabbages, they didn't really do well. And I had now I understand why his cabbage didn't do well because he doesn't give you the same attention that I may give my farm. Okay. So he said he had a land in Akuse. Um, I don't know, Kofi lives in Akuse, so then it will be easy for you to have somebody coming in and out. He said, oh, he still needs me to come to the place to see. Me. So I came. I saw the canal. The canal was why I decided to come here. It was again it was closer to Accra. Yeah. In the market. I wouldn't want to centralize the market again. In Accra, but the the market was in Accra. It's actually here. So I could say to um, Accra is short. Short, yeah. It's, it's yeah, very yeah. close. Unlike me going to the Volta region every Wednesday to check on to the check farm. my farm. I I left Accra on Wednesdays and came back on Monday dawns to come to work every week. But is the teaching was it like the <coughs> national service? You you Monday. So I had Wednesdays. finished. I had finished national service. I I decided to do voluntary teaching in my church's school, Epitrinity Business School in Magina. Okay. They didn't really, they couldn't really afford teachers. It was my church, and I was having the time. So, for instance, the farm is such that it gets to a point. All you need is just come and open just water and give it whatever you want to give it. So I could actually get one person to be there while I'm away and. I'll be there on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So five days out of seven was okay for me. Okay, okay. So I was shuttling them like that. So if if I would want to still keep doing my voluntary work, then I would want a place closer. So I came to Akusi, the canal. Again, the canal land was not very big for me. The one I got wasn't big for me because but, but I was- Why is that one? Is there a different location from yeah, here? Yeah, it's, it's a bit, it's quite a distance from here. Okay. But my friend Augustine still has his farm over there. Over there, yeah. sure, sure, sure. So Kofi decided, why don't we get it closer to the Akusi Junction? Because there is another distance. We are all looking at reducing production costs so that the food will be cheap for everybody to well, be able yeah, to afford. Good road network and everything. Exactly. So Kofi got this place, which is his friend's place, Kafui. So Kafui gave us out. He gave out this place for free. He didn't charge oh, nice. me anything i use this water for free he didn't charge <laughs> me anything sure uh, is kafu the uh, real estate yes man yes okay, okay. mr okay. dumenu we call him mr dumenu, mr. dumenu. Yeah. Nice, nice 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 so he has a park here <laughs> ava park occasionally people come to wala time mm. and if you could see behind us you see they, they are digging some places it's, it would be an extension of the park where you keep um 
tilapia, catfish, all get towards the farming the farm. because we are going to use the water from the tilapia to irrigate and be very nutritious. Okay. So, well, better, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay, okay. So if I may ask the other farm, the one in the Volta region, mm. um, how much did you start that one when you decided to begin? Or is it that your parents own that farm? No, the land my, I started that farm with three of my fr- two of my friends. Um, came over my more. He works at commercial bank in Ho. Okay. Then I have a friend, Sheriff. We stay in the same area in Butchery. I wanted to do it alone, but they wanted to be a part. Mm. They were a part financially. <laughs> I was there with my physique, with my money too. Okay. Okay. Um, sure. We bought everything that an acre would cost, but at the time, it wasn't very expensive. How much? How much? You can you even estimate? Uh, I think around 15k 15,000 yeah okay okay for the one acre farm was it an acre farm land wasn't we didn't exhaust the whole acre but we bought everything an acre would have needed okay. so we bought the fertilizers for a whole year we bought poly tanks we bought drip lines we bought sub mains everything mm. and that was summed up to the 15k yes but well, it was quite quite cool yeah it was, it was okay okay so over there you grew peppers yeah or? it was was peppers okay okay Okay. So so far, how has it been like? How's the farming journey been like? Has it been profitable? Has it been good? Has it been bad? Let, let you, us know. If you treat your farm as a business, it's great. Okay. You have to treat your farm as a business. So as a business owner, you should always be on your farm and make sure you get the best money for your mm. for your crops. That's the most important thing. It's been profitable, but it's the journey is not smooth obviously yeah you have people swindling you here and there but <laughs> some people swindling you <laughs> okay so um i want to can you share um an experience of someone who said who is swindling you uh, how, how did i want to come about uh, i got two acres of my ginger stone yeah. how is it like after harvesting them he harvested everything he harvested it actually ah so he came to the farm actually did the he harvesting. was my farm hand are you serious yeah how long has it was this? It was like three years ago. Wow. I still see him every day. <laughs> <laughs> I still see him every day. Uh, how's the reaction like? Well, how did you find out it was him that did it? He told me he did it. Yeah. It's interesting. He, he was arrested actually. No, I, I didn't get him arrested. He actually did it to other people. Yeah. Or in the same locality or no not here in the whole region around Seram's place oh okay yeah, so Seram Seram even heard of it that's how come Seram and I became cool okay okay sure ah so it was not on this farm was when you were in the no, whole no, no, region no. I was yeah. thinking like this this is my first time actually farming here okay okay this is my first time over here so I'm I'm actually getting to learn and oh. experience the weather over here it's quite different from where I was where I was 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 a little heaven it was like each time any of the agronomists comes there, they call it um, a greenhouse, an open field greenhouse. It was cool. Mm. So you could have some of my peppers. Some of my peppers grew as tall as that tree. Wow. Yeah. That's how good the land was. I think it's the, con- the weather, weather conditions. Condition. Yeah. It rains mostly there. It's humid. It rains, but it's, it's also humid. So the vegetation helps it to grow. Here it's quite hot. So you would have shorter stems given what we saw in the garden okay. i don't expect this to be as they will grow tall i know they'll grow tall but i don't think they'll be as tall as the ones i grew in the water area oh, okay okay so let, let's load the number of years so um the farm in the water region how long has it been since you began actually began for the purpose yeah for the purpose this is my third year third year growing peppers yeah so look say you began in the water region that was after you that was 2017 okay then um, you spent how many years there before moving here to this place? So this is my first year, so I think I spent... Are your first year here? Yes, my first year here, my first time here. Oh, so nice. all... Hey, hey, for this is interesting. Uh, it's... Kofi is here, so. The agronomist <laughs> is always here. That is the... That's the secret of the farms. Um, we are farmers. We have agronomists. They are there to support you. There is no way now somebody should do a farming feel no. if you feel you didn't listen to advice you didn't talk to the right persons once you have an agronomist on the farm and the agronomist knows what he's doing you should succeed yeah of course 
once you listen to the agronomist, of course, you should succeed. So they are, okay, so supposing people are watching us, they want to get some of these agronomists. Do they come with a fee? How how is the whole arrangement like? Eh, uh, Kofi and I and our brothers, I don't pay. Kofi and I and our brothers, I don't pay. But initially, also but you have to, to pay. You have to pay agronomist. Um, especially if you want to work with um a company like the pharmacist. Okay. For me, they are the best agronomists. Kofi is is great, but he. He says those those are his seniors, so obviously. Sure, sure. Charles, Alex, Sele. No, I know Charles. I know Alex. Yes, Sele. Sele is part of Charles and Alex, but he's more. She's more Holland Green Tech, so you don't really. Okay. Yeah. They are very, 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 very great agronomists. There's one called Franco. Yeah, I don't know Franco. You know Franco. Okay, Franco is an agronomist, but he doesn't want to do agronomy now. So Franco does land preparation. <laughs> he does more irrigation and land preparation. Okay. Uh, okay. Franco Franco gave me his parcel. That's the parcel you find in the garden. Sure. He sure, asked sure. me to be using it for now. You come for it later. Yeah, but he won't come for it later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay. you you would have to pay agronomists. Um, there is an arrangement. I know that for the greenhouses. Mm -hmm. I think when they come to your place, they come three times through the production cycle. You have to pay. I've not actually had financial um, conversations with Whatever. agronomists before. I think the reason why I had I have Kofi working on my farm or um, as an agronomist is because I buy from Holland Green Tech. That's what the Holland seeds. Green Tech gives. But I think you should pay them. I've, I don't pay them. It's Kofi around. But Kofi's not around. Kofi, no. he's, I, I didn't see his motorbike, so he's not around. Maybe some other time we'll try and catch him and yeah. have a conversation with him. Okay. So let's look. Um, I'm obviously doing this since um, after uni so now. There's been some challenges. What do you say is the main challenges that comes with um, farming for you? I think the challenges in farming depends on largely on where you are and on who you are. For instance, in the Volta region, they don't have machinery. Okay. So it's quite difficult farming in the Volta region, if you ask me, because for me to grow peppers in the Volta region, I had manual labor, do my beds, manual labor, everything. I couldn't even plow because I hardly had the machines. The Ministry of Food and Agri in the Volta region, they the TOs do well, but I don't think they have a lot of mm. machines. The veterinary officers do well, but they don't have a lot of machinery. things that would help them to do their work. The Volterians are hardworking people. So everything is mostly done manually there? Manually. So you would have, and you see, it's not far from Togo. So you have Togolese come in and out, especially in the ginger farms, you have a lot of Togolese working for yeah, us. Yeah, when I went to a, a, a full split, Seriam's place, he told me a lot it's of just some few, yeah. Exactly. So Togo. They come to do most of the manual work. But with a place like Akuse, it's largely machinery. Nice. You have, a tractor come to plow the same tractor has a harrow to harrow it has a rotavator to rotavate and make beds for you and even now they have equipment that would line the drip lines on the beds on the for beds. you oh wow yeah. everything is like mechanized here yeah. exactly i think very soon they would have ones that would merge so clearly here is far more easier they have canals there there's there's access to water unlike the water dig a ball or get closer to the riverside before you could actually farm. I get you. I get so you. The, the challenges are different. And for the market aspect, of course there are challenges, but to go beyond those challenges, just grow things that people don't like to grow and grow them when people don't want to grow them. So I, if I get you, yes. So you don't grow it like in the season, when there is a lot of it in the season? Fortunately, Habaneros are not common. Okay. So the habaneros are habaneros are not seasonal. Every day the fruits. Every day they are there. Once you grow them, every day somebody wants them because they are not available. Until a lot of people I think a lot of people now have gotten the crease of habaneros. People want to grow it. People are growing it. So until it gets to that point, habaneros are not seasonal. They are everyday crops. So you get the same value for it throughout the year. Okay, so let me ask this question. Mm. Is farming habaneros or the peppers 
profitable. Of course, it's extremely profitable. <laughs> I like the way you put it, extremely profitable. Yeah, it's very extremely profitable if you do it right. Okay, by getting the agronomist to come and check, yeah, to yeah. share following the right treatments to do it. Yeah. It's okay. very, very profitable when you have the market. Very profitable. Okay, so if you are given, if you say in terms of profitability, most people like to you know the like numbers. Yes, exactly. Do some a little of course benefit analysis. What you get. So let's say if you are given an estimate, let's say a yearly estimate of what you can make from habaneros or like when you sell it on a monthly basis. Um, what what would be the profit the profit the profit ratio or profit margin? Of Again, the person you sell to is important. Um, if you are selling to market women, of course the profit margin will reduce. If you are selling to the um, supermarkets and the malls, it's quite it's different. Quite, yeah. But if we are if we if we are pegging the prices at thirty CDs a kilo, okay. On an acre, you should get like a ton a week. Oh. Uh, that's when it picks. Okay. So when it picks, maybe it picks you maybe ten months. Or 12 months at its peak at its peak okay so you get a ton but on a large farm like mine obviously i can't sell a kilo for 30 cities because if somebody will come and i'm buying 10 tons you can't sell 10 tons to a person at 30 cities a kilo so if somebody has an acre or less than an acre of depending depending on the number of sticks of habaneros for me like i said i've grown it for a while so i know a lot about habaneros i know how much they weigh so I could actually tell you how much I could get from each plant if you have to, yeah. If I'm to weigh and all of those. So if you get a kilo, if you get a ton on an acre, 30 cities a kilo, that's 30k a week. Hmm. Interesting. Exactly. And it can span you 10, 12 weeks at peak. Always footing. Yeah. It's like I said, you treat it like you treat it like a baby. It behaves like a baby. Baby, yeah. You treat it as an adult. It goes woke. It behaves like, like an, an adult. adult. It's, it's on its own. Okay, okay. So it's best to to sell them, not necessarily to the market women, but have these. Even if you sell both. to the market women, even if you sell to the market women, the profit margin is still good. It's still good. It's still very good. You may not. You may cut the. You may cut it into two, but you still make a rewarding amount. For instance, now I think fifty k. Will do you an acre? 50k. Yes. Yeah. Is it on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis? No, I mean thing? 50k will do you an acre, like the, to set up the entire farm. Oh, okay, okay, okay. An acre of like a habanero farm. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. 50k should do. Is it inclusive of the land, the preparation, poly tanks, uh, drip lines, fertilizers? 50k. Should 50k do. should do. That's like an acre of habanero farm, right? I think, yeah. If 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 the if Akufado doesn't <laughs> increase the prices again, prices in terms of like joking. the pipes, yeah, because the, the pipe prices keep changing. I used to buy these pipes for like um, six six or five something, but now you pay like a thousand two or thousand one for for them. Some of those. Okay. So it's okay. quite expensive now. But I mean, I like you doing the mechanized farming because I think that's the way to go now. The manual way, it involves a lot of work and mostly the results, the output that comes from it isn't that much. True. So now I think, I like other countries, or they don't even do manual farming. Everyone does like the mechanized one. You get it. Because farming and depending on rain and all of those things, at times it doesn't help. If you have like a mechanized one you do, you can always be generating revenue and stuff from it. Okay, so it means I would have to ask. So this farm, you do it alone, with your, or you have like someone you are partnering with to do it. Nah, I I have partners. You have partners. I would, I would say I have partners. <laughs> Why? <laughs> they are smiling. You say you have partners. Why? I have partners at the point. I have. I'm alone at the point. So I have partners. Let's just say I have partners. You say you have partners. I'm asking because maybe supposing some of my viewers are watching us and. The maybe someone want to come and invest, someone want you to also do a similar farm I don't think for them. Investors. You don't think investors. Mm. What it's about those stressful. who also? Okay, what about those who also have want you to come and set up a similar farm for them? Can they reach out? We as we are we are always championing the cost of having irrigated farms. We are we are not only looking at people growing habaneros. We are looking at people growing 
things we eat on a regular. We can we we have drip irrigation for maize farms. Oh. The Franco, I mentioned Franco. Franco is setting up a drip irrigation for a maize farm at Inkranza. A nice. 50 acre maize farm. Wow. Drip irrigation. That's so expensive, but it's for maize. We are hoping that a lot of people will do irrigation so that tomatoes prices could be cheaper, okra prices could be cheaper. Because once it's an all year round production and we are a lot, we'll be cheaper. We'll get a lot of things yeah. far more yeah. cheaper than they are now. This tomato thing you made mention of here. Uh, um, I visited quite a number of tomato farms, and normally what they say is, and even with the market to me, what they say is that normally you bring tomatoes from Burkina. Mm. They prefer the Burkina ones than the ones we produce here. Did you ask them why? Yes, because they said one, it lasts longer. Mm-hmm. Two, ours is not that heavy and it contains a lot of water. Mm-hmm. The Burkina one is contains more, how do you call it, um, food. Mm-hmm. Let me put it that way. So my my issue is, is it that? This, with the, the, where the tomatoes they grow in Burkina is different from the one we grow in terms of like the seeds they use or what is causing these things. The tomatoes I have grown is better than the Burkina ones. Okay. If you go to Holland Green Tech, there's a variety called the Abali. Abali. Abali is very heavy, very meaty. Let's watch you. It's nice. Abali is huge. It has a longer shelf life. Very long. I'm not advertising Holland Green Tech. It's facts. We grew them here for trials and they were fantastic. Good. Okay. If you'd come here again another time, you would have us grow at least thousand sticks of abali oh, down the stretch. Okay. Okay. It's for us to eat at home, but but then you would actually see what I. You see, the most farmers don't like to again. I'm sorry to farmers, but oh, most just, farmers don't like to of truth, invest in what, in, in what they are doing. Here, I think someone went to Seram also said the same thing. Yes. Here, I prefer to use a mist blower to normal Namsak spray. Okay. Because it would help me again with fungicides and it saves you. But the farmer will be like, now nah, I would now buy this thing and now buy petrol and all. No. The farmer is going to buy seeds and the person prefers, oh, I'll, I'll grow it in my farm. So the tomatoes I'm eating, let me just extract the seeds. And use and that go. on the, f- okay. Day in, day out, seeds are being made. Hybrid seeds are being made that will fight um, diseases and pest control would be better. If you'd agree with me, um, tomatoes has one huge problem, that's pest control. Pest control, yeah. So new tomatoes are there. The abali like this has a very good resistance to insects. Okay. I don't lie. If you check Alexis or Charles's page, they 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 posted an abali, very very heavy, very meaty, very like it has. Abali has at least three weeks or a month shelf life. Mm. You would find it looking like it's shrinking, but it's still it's, it's still, still great. Okay. Okay. So I basically think what farmers should do is get seeds that have that strength that could compare to the Burkina Bay ones. Why don't we just go and get seeds from Burkina Faso and just have farmers get those seeds and grow them? Rise One has one of the best seeds. I I find people complaining about the seeds they buy from other um, seeds vendors. But I hardly have people complain about seeds they buy from Holland Green Tech. Oh, and Holland Green Tech sells rice one seeds. Okay. So. Is it like a breed, um, a particular type of variety of tobacco? Rice one is a company that breeds peppers. And they are, and the person who breeds pe- the peppers is Ghanaian, but he breeds for a Dutch company. Uh, it's, it's African. He's, I think he's, he's from Guinea or Benin. He's Beninois. Okay. Eugene. But he breeds it for the for the company and they sell it to other countries. Yes. So Rise One is so you have I I and I, I am very sure Rise One is the one who sells seeds to Burkina Faso because Rise Rise One is actually dominating Kenya, Rwanda, oh, nice. South Africa, all those places that grow Tanzania. Like they use Rise One seeds. Okay. So it's okay. it's for me it's largely has to do with the seeds you grow. If you had come to see 
the tomatoes we yield the market women will like it it's heavy and even those tomatoes i would i wouldn't want to sell to a market woman <laughs> the market women cheat us a lot so yeah. we hardly want to sell to them it's high time they are they allow us to to weigh our food to sell with that we can have a standardized price, price for, it. for it they just come they look at it they have a and they tell you this you, amount one basket is 50 cities i don't do baskets in my farm i weigh <laughs> them if you won't buy Bye bye. I, I I also take the tomatoes one too. Normally, you see with the seeds you mentioned, we have to do. You have to pay more attention to it. You have to go like if you get to the farm, do it mechanically before you can get the good output from it. Sure. Most of these tomato farmers who do some of these things depend on the rain and stuff. Because you visit a tomato farm, like somewhere in the eastern region, I think they grow also. They depend on the rain. The water body there was even dried out at the time we went there, so it's not you don't really get the, like the good output from it, and that's where the market women have to go, also go and buy the tomato shrub. Because when we went there, it was like a harvesting the people they were there determining their price, cheating the farmers and stuff. I saw that first time, so yeah, I I get I, I get that that challenge that comes with it. Okay, so um, let's try to wrap up. So, do you believe like farming is the future? You believe we always say agriculture is like the backbone of the economy and stuff do you actually believe that no, i'm leaving it so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually leaving <laughs> farming farming is it's it could be the future if it's done right okay. if we are doing it right i would agree that farming is the future once it's done right if you are not doing it right okay. it's not it's not compulsory for you to to mulch but it saves you money it saves money you time that. there was a hundred acre tomato farm on your way to this place around when you are going to sue me. Okay. They folded up because of insects. Why? Because they didn't have mulch. Mm. There was grass. They couldn't even control the weed. So, they lost tomatoes. Quite a damn. Because 100, 100 acres. acres. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. They were selling. They, I think they sold for a week or two or three. They couldn't control the insects. They had to just fold up because that's a lot of money invested. And it was drip irrigated. They, wow. have, they, have a dam, they have a dam that is as big as my farm. You can imagine. Yeah, they have a dam that is as big as this place. Interesting. That dam is sitting on, if I won't lie, close to an acre or more than an acre, if I won't lie. And they folded up. They gave me their poly tank to be using. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful to them. <laughs> <laughs> They have everything. Oh, one man's lost, another man's game. They have everything. They have tractors. They come to plow my place. They come to make all the beds. And everything. they just lost the hundred acres just like that. Yeah, the money is gone. That's how much challenges that come with with farming. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, you see now, it's like the economy is kind of hard. <laughs> Unemployment issues are a lot. True. Most people are not gearing towards the idea of agriculture because now most of us ah, come on the farm to come and do farming we don't we're looking at the easy quick means of like making money um if there's any advice if any thought you share about most of the our colleagues who are unemployed after school for some time now not having anything to do some of them we have like farmlands available family farmland but they don't see the idea of going into it if you have anything to um say to them or to share with that what would that be the quickest money ritual you can ever do is farming. Okay. Any cicadro you will do in this life is farming. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Why it, do you say that? It's you put you you put a pepper to ground and in three months you are harvesting for six months or a whole year. It's cicadro, it gives you more money than you go and sacrifice whoever you want to sacrifice. The the only thing I would say, I I think this is my opinion. I think that we are not, people are not really previewed to the idea of farming. We, we say it vaguely, we just go, go into farm, go into farm. We don't actually lead the people to, to the farm. farm. To start, okay. um, Holland Green Tech does something that is very good. What they do is that occasionally they organize programs on farms okay. in, their, in, their, in their workplace. They have people coming by. I can be in the farm and Araba will call me. So so and so wants to visit your farm. Okay, come. Let them come. Once the person comes and sees what is going on and how it is, this is actually a lazy farm. Farming now is lazy. Because of the 
machinery and because everything. of the machinery the only it's more rhino farming is more science there's more put it one to one to two and make it a three it's more like like that's done i think the idea young people have about us young people have about farms is i'll use a hole and be digging yeah, the floor the manual way of going but that's what you've seen our fathers and our forefathers so farming is going beyond that farming is going beyond we can actually like i said my my first pepper farm I had a part. I had partners, two partners. There's nothing wrong with having partners. You just have to have a like-minded group of people. Okay. It's cheaper when you partner. You you make way more money when you partner. When you partner. Once there's no one who is selfish amongst you, it's easier. No one wants to play smart. Everyone is is doing what they they should do. They are bit. It's, I think. I think. I can't force all the young people to go to go, Yeah, farm. that was definitely everyone that would. But anyone who can afford it to try. But before you try it, visit farms, talk to farmers, but listen to agronomists more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Visit farm, talk to farmers, but listen to more more agronomists. Have them be just be on their neck. Come, come to the farm, please come. Once you see something you are not familiar, with, it's your first time. You would experience it. Just let them come. And check it out. Yeah, you can. You just give maybe the, the person the lorry fare or some buy coke, buy something. The person would be willing to come to check your place out. Kofi is excited when he travels. He oh, gets okay. tired, but he's excited. I wish. I wish I, I see Kofi. Kofi is at us to try right now. He's, he says he's busy. He can't come. Okay. okay. If he if he was here, you would like Kofi more than you like me. <laughs> <laughs> Kofi is a nicer person. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Okay, right, so um, also, if, if there's one thing you feel like the government should pay attention more when it comes to agriculture, what would that be? They should put agriculture into national service. Okay. That's my opinion. Then, if we are paid six, five hundred and something Ghana cities. Five, nine, nine. I had, I had this thing in my head. Maybe it sound, it's, it's stupid, but that's, I had this thing in my head. I feel that, um, Ministry of Food and, and Agri, yeah. in collaboration with the government and ADB, could have done something for national service personnel. In what sense? Yeah. Here, you, you we have a lot of Ministry of Food and Agri scattered around. Okay. In the Volta region, we have offices. Here, we have. I saw an office here. They have people who do agri science, and you have almost all those people go to work as ministries. Yeah. yeah. National service. They are working at um, uh, foreign, um, foreign affairs. They are working at uh, uh, Ministry of Defense. What are you doing over there? <laughs> ADB could give them a chunk of their um, um, national service allowances through um, the various Ministry of Food and Agri. Set up farms for them. And they, before they even finish national service, these people are richer than us who are actually going to do whatever we are doing. Split the amount into three. The government takes one. One part is split between ADB and um, the Ministry of Food and Agri. The, the, the young person takes a part of the money. Now, the young person taking that part of the money means that the person has seen the person has seen what it takes to start a farm. Okay. The person has seen what it takes what it takes to start a farm. The person has um, revenue to start a farm. The person is not going to depend. The person is not going to depend on the five five nine. Then even after that, so I didn't even pick you. Then you become stranded after after that. Exactly. So they you they go like um going to farm. Okay, we don't have capital. You have actually given the person the capital from national service. The person's own money. The person wouldn't need to go for a loan from the bank when you are when you go for loans from the bank to do farm it's, it's scary yeah, yeah, yeah i don't advise you have to be, have a good collateral for, for the because loan. you farm and today i there was a time in on my pepper farm i asked my cousin to apply uh, insecticides on my peppers and put calcium nitrate and the rest you know we mix them we do fertigation so we mix the fertilizers we put them into poly the poly tank and then gravity Gravity gets them through to all the peppers. Okay. He placed the insecticide insecticides inside the polytank. Then he mixed calcium nitrate, magnesium sulfate, potassium nitrate, yeah. map. <laughs> he mixed it, poured it into his knapsack spray and sprayed all the peppers. Oh. 
the papers got burnt. But papers are forgiven. They rejuvenated, but it took a toll on them. So they couldn't really produce as much as they should. They should have produced it. Yeah. You see, so imagine you go for loan and that happens. Sikanashi. Sikanashi. <laughs> How would you pay back? You begin to run, 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 and run. <laughs> so I think that is one way the government should adopt it from 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 the scratch from from the start. National service. So the person leaving national service doesn't depend on you for a job. Doesn't depend on you for money. Nothing. I get you. Yeah. I get you. I think that also makes sense. Let me know. Let me know what you think in the comment section. If that could be a viable option that the government can also use. Um, I say national service means for those who study agriculture in school. Because you find out most of these people do agri. And the end product, what they do in national service is way different yeah. from what you actually want to study. And they venture into other different things. Okay. So I think um, this will be, we'll end the video here. In the second video, we're going to have a look at the farm tour. Look at the farm here. Um, I know you can see some little glimpse of shots behind me. There's a very beautiful farm and a large farm. Um, we'll go around, try and have a look at what it does. Then later, we'll come and look at habaneros, how we can learn learn more about it how you can also grow some if you want to maybe start on your own and some information that will be helpful to you so yeah make sure you do check out the subscribe videos that will come out before we end this video make sure you like comment share and subscribe share this video so other people to get to learn more see exciting things that young individuals are doing here in ghana for themselves and also for the country to also learn more and please subscribe to the channel so you all get to grow together all right i'll see you all in the next one peace out